there must be something supernatural about Gomez Adams, because he attended Nevermore, a school where it appears that a mutation or a magical ability is a requirement. I may be overthinking it, but is Gomez a retired necromancer? Uncle Fester confirms that necromancy is a known discipline in this world. A normie is able to perform a basic ritual when she raises a pilgrim, so necromancy does not require any supernatural mutation or power. And that's good for Gomez, because he definitely does not fit the other types of outcast. He's not a fang, or a fur, or a scale, or a stoner, or a seer, or a hide, or a blank, or a shifter, or a pusher or a conjurer, or a bee whisperer, or a lobotomy recipient. In fact, outside of his necromancy flair, the closest thing he has to being an outcast is falling in love with a Nevermore student, the icon herself, Morticia. Their torrid romance produced way fewer children than I would have expected. Nevertheless, Gomez filled the role as a larger-than-life patriarch. The entire family is uniquely absorbed by his fascination with morbidity, no doubt derived from Gomez's penchant for gaming the boundaries between death and life. Wednesday even confirms that her family celebrates year-round Dia de los Muertos, meaning that the Adamses spend 365 days a year on the very edge of the astral plane. Surely Morticia's seer ability protects her family from danger before it arises. And the proof that Gomez is a necromancer towers over them all. Lurch is absolutely a freshly killed corpse that's been reanimated, and a loss of any discernible humanity made him the perfect unpaid servant. Gomez may not have murdered the man, but he absolutely resurrected him. And of course, there's Thing, his crowning achievement and awkward mystery, because surely Enid wasn't the first person to ask about the person it belonged to. Gomez figured out how to make a severed hand hear without ears, to see without eyes, to think without a brain, to smell without a nose, to feel without a soul, to live without a need for food, and to resist decay as if by magic. Gomez shrunk down someone's humanity to fit inside an appendage, and he kept silent about what happened to the person it came from. Whatever happened, it kept him from telling his children about his necromancer past, because surely a doting father would have resurrected his father's beloved pet if she asked. But Wednesday does not appear to know about any necromancy talent hinting to a deeper mystery which ties together a dead scorpion, a lumbering butler, a reanimated hand, a missing human body, and a secret discipline. The quickest rebuttal is that Gomez would have been practicing while at Nevermore. So, if he was a necromancer, why didn't he resurrect Garrett Gates and save himself the trouble? Well, the nightshade poisoning left a physical mark on the corpse, and it's reasonable to assume that limitations to necromancy do exist, meaning that Gomez may not have been able to keep Garrett alive while the poison coursed through his veins. If only he had just been stabbed and fallen to his death, he'd still be alive today. Season 2 might be about the various power vacuums that now exist. The dead mayor and dead principal kept Jericho and Nevermore peaceful, and the appointment of top leadership might also introduce the board of directors, meaning we could meet Rowan's father, because why else would he prioritize the school's reputation over his child's murder? And also, the Nightshades need to find their way back to their original mission, so the secret society will need fresh new leadership. Unfortunately, I don't think this gives us much room to explore Gomez's past, so hopefully this is a loose thread our gothic gumshoe will pull at in Season 3. Of course, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. 
Maybe Thing and Lurch are sustained by the power of love and acceptance, rather than dark magic. And maybe being super into death and the occult is enough to earn your way into Nevermore Academy. But I kinda like my theory better, so I'm rolling with it. Until next time, keep reading between them lines. If you enjoyed this video, you should totally check out my other Wednesday video, where I lay out the evidence that the founder of Nevermore built his school after a visit to Ravenclaw House specifically. And please, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll talk at you next time.